Okay, guys, today I am telling you how I made my apron. I already made it, so you can see me wearing it. I am super ready for fall, and this guy with the candy corn hat is giving me all the feels. <laughs> Today's video is I made an apron. I did not use a pattern. I'm gonna share my process with you guys. Um, I sort of copied a the measurements of a store-bought apron from Target. Targe. Targe. At the same time, this is kind of a sewing 101 because we do a couple of different types of hems and once you know how to hem stuff you can hem stuff you can make things like skirts that require a hem pants that require a hem um you know your skills are blooming and blossoming right before our eyes <laughs> i don't know I got, I got issues. I got more issues than Vogue, folks. The very first thing that I did was take the measurements of my store-bought apron, and I'll plop those up on the screen for you. When I was taking the measurements, I took into consideration seam allowances, hems, um, pocket size and all of those kind of details that would be important for you to know in order to make this without a pattern. I don't know about you guys, but I am super in the mood for fall right now. So I am making this out of these adorable little folly themed gnomes. Some harvest stuff going on. He might lean a little towards Thanksgiving because I mean like he's got a turkey hat and he looks like a cornucopia, but I, it's pumpkins, <laughs> not gonna lie. I have folded this so that it is perfectly straight. What that basically means is that my salvages are lined up and then this is not laying crooked. To find that, I often look for um, a specific thing like a leaf and make sure the leaf is in the same place every time the print repeats. I do need to square it because this was crooked when it was cut. That's normal. They do that all the time because it gets wound onto the bolt crooked. I'm gonna square it and I'm gonna cut it so that it's 39 inches by with a fabric. Okay, I've cut my first piece. I'm 39 inches by width of fabric. And then I'm going to cut it down to the width that I need, which is 27 inches wide. So now I'm gonna cut this to 13.5. What's left over here is what I'm gonna use to make my straps. From this section that I cut off the end of my yardage, it's just shy of half a yard. I'm gonna use this to cut out my pockets. Now, the pockets that were on my Magnolia Home apron were a little smaller than I like. I'm actually gonna make my pockets a little bit bigger because I like to have them big enough for my phone to fit into. And so I'm gonna make my pockets nine inch squares. But feel free, if you like the size of the pockets on the Magnolia Home apron, go for it. I'm going to use bigger. Okay, I'm back again, and I'm changing my mind again. I'm kind of thinking instead of doing two pockets, I'm going to do one pocket across the entire waistline of the apron and then just divide it up with stitch lines. I think that might be good. What do you think?
Okay, so what I did, what I decided to do, because this is what I'm doing. Um, I cut nine and a half inches by with a fabric. And then I cut the folds open and I took off the salvage. Everything else... Yeah, that's it. I took off like the half inch salvage and cut that open. Then what I'm gonna do is sew them together, right sides together. Flip them right side out, just like we did with the little mini pillow in the straight line sewing tutorial. I will put an I card to that somewhere. So that way this pocket is fully lined and I'm not gonna have any fraying. That means everything is cut out. Yay! Oh, we still gotta figure out the armpit holes for this guy. On my Magnolia Holmes apron, the bib is going to be 12 and a half inches wide without that seam allowance. So because my fabric is folded in half, the middle, I put a pin at six and a half. No, six and a quarter. Good thing I recheck my math. Always recheck your math. You know, that old adage, measure twice, cut once. And then my waist under armpit edge, under armpit edge, that's not right, is at nine and a half down from the top. And that's after reserving an inch to fold down. So I already took my seam allowances into consideration, okay? So now all I need to do is make just a soft curve from here to here. And I want to make sure that I start at least two inches down from the top before I start to curve. So that way, that way this top edge doesn't get all janky. I'm measuring down the two inches and I'm using a chalk pencil. I love chalk pencils, by the way. Okay. And I'm going to measure in two inches here as well. Actually, I'm going to measure in here like three inches. It's okay to, it's okay to change your mind every now and then. And the beauty is, oh, it's chalk. It's okay. Now, I'm just going to do a soft curve from there to there. You can draw a soft curve, right? So, f my favorite way to do a soft curve is the bend of low wrist. The natural pivot of your wrist. In my case, I don't have a natural pivot of my wrist. You have a natural pivot of your wrist. You can make that, you can make that happen. So that's my cut line for my armpit hole. Granted, this is just for an apron. I wouldn't make clothes this way. This level of precision, or lack of precision, I should say. By cutting it folded in half, the left side and our right side will match. I've got my handy dandy pinking shears.
the reason that I am using my thinking shears is because this is a curve. Because those little triangles spread apart a little bit when I do that rollover hem. If you don't have pinking shears, it's okay. You can clip your corners instead. We're ready to assemble. I'm gonna assemble the pockets. We're gonna do the straps. Oh, there's the other two straps. We're gonna do the straps. And then we're gonna hem the body and attach everything. Okay, sounds like a plan? Yeah, that's my plan and I'm sticking to it. So to do this, this is the exact same as the pillow key, the little pillow tutorial we did in Sewing 101. I'm gonna leave a little opening, sew all the way around, clip my corners, flip it right side out, but we're not gonna stuff it because it's not a pillow. All right, I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. My little pocket is right side out. I'm gonna press the bejesus out of it and I'm gonna make sure this top edge is also nice and tight, like that. We don't want any duck lips. We don't want duck lips like that. We want it nice and tight, like that. I'm gonna make sure my edges are really nice and tight and then I'm gonna top stitch along the top. I'm not worried about closing this hole yet. We will close this hole when we attach the pocket to the apron. Okay, that top stitching is done. I don't know if you, hope you can see it. Okay. I did a row an eighth of an inch from the top edge and then I did another row five eighths of an inch down from the top edge. And this will just give that a nice finished pocket aesthetic. Aesthetic. Okay. And I'm not worried about top stitching the sides or the bottom because that will get done when we attach it. So for now, I'm gonna put this aside and I'm gonna do the straps. And the straps we're gonna do almost the same way. It just feels different because they're long and skinny. We're gonna fold them in half, right sides together. And I'm gonna sew all the way down and I'm gonna make a long tube. Okay. And I'm gonna do that to all four of my straps. I'll be back momentarily. So remember when we talked about why you hold your tails when you start? If you don't, it looks like that. Okay, to right side my straps out, I'm going to use a little safety pin trick. It's a little finessing to get used to it, but you clip your safety pin to the one end that is sewn shut. And then finesse it so that it comes down and around over the safety pin. Oops. 
just takes a second of finessing. So he's in there. And then just use the head of the safety pin as your guide to help you push it through. Your safety pin, you can unhook from inside. You just gotta use your fingers and fold, blindly go about it. And now my safety pin is open, see, wow. But the, the hinge end of the safety pin is at this end and I'm pushing it out hinge first so that way it comes out easy. Okie dokie. This side is open. This side is sewn shut. And now we're gonna top stitch all the way around this. Doing the same thing we did on the pocket. This end I'm going to trim the threads, zhuzh it a little bit to tuck it in there. So this guy gets a nice solid ironing. And I'm going to do that to the last three. Ironing and then top stitching to all three. Okay, all four of my straps are assembled. I'm gonna toss them aside and work on the body of the apron. I'm gonna start with the bottom. I'm going to press I like the thick, chunky hem that's on my store-bought apron. We have enough fabric here to do a nice, thick hem. And, and okay, nice, thick, chunky hem. I'm gonna roll this up one inch and I'm gonna press it. I'm using my grid on my ironing board. <clears throat> That's how I know where I'm at. Okay. And now I'm gonna roll this up two inches. Now I'm gonna press this nice and crisp and I'm gonna sew along the top of this little fold line. Okay, I'm gonna do the side seams next, the exact same way. Oops, there's still pins. I'm gonna do the side seams next, the exact same way. 
but I'm only gonna do a total of one inch. So it'll be a half an inch and then a half an inch. So to get our half of half inch hem, I'm going up that whole inch. And then I'm going to tuck this in. To that fold line. And to the side as well. <laughs> I love this guy's candy corn hat. Oh, he's so stinking cute. Okay, I'm going to go and sew these right along this top fold here, and I'll be back in a few. Bottom hem is in, side hems are in. I've decided upon thinking about it that I'm going to add a little bit of interfacing to the top bib Hem. So I cut myself a piece of ironing on interfacing, iron on interfacing, I iron on interfacing, iron on interfacing. There we go. And you attach it to your fabric. There's two sides to it. That side's kind of rough textured, and that side's kind of smooth textured. That rough texture is the adhesive. So that goes to the wrong side of your fabric. The reason that I'm doing this is because all of the weight of this apron is going to be around the neck. And so I decided... It's going to give me a little extra strength and durability by doing that. And just like we hemmed the top, the bottom and the sides, I'm also going to do a very small, about a quarter of an inch down, just so that my raw edges don't fray because they won't be exposed. And now I'm going to take my now finished side, finished edge, and I'm gonna bring it just past the edge of my interfacing because I don't wanna see my interfacing. And again, I'm just going to stitch right through all three layers. Okay. 
Next, we are going to do a very thin quarter inch roll hem around the armpit seams. So I'm going to do a small roll and then a small roll. The fact that I used my pinking shears is going to allow that fabric to bend a little bit around this curve. So there's the armpit seam of lay apron. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to attach my straps. I have to, my fabric is directional, so I have to pay attention to which direction my nomies are facing. I'm going to pin it right here. And I'm going to sew a little square right here. And then I'm gonna sew an X in the middle of the square. Then the under the arm seam, I'm gonna sew the exact same place. Right there. And again, I'm gonna sew that little square right there with an X in the middle. And do that with all four straps. For my pocket placement, I found the center of my pocket, the center of my apron, which there's a line there from when we originally folded it in half and pressed it, so that way our side seams were even. I lined those up. I'm going to pin it in place along the sides and along the bottom. 